I've always had an affinity for speedrunning when it came to video games. I can't tell you exactly what it is, but there's a thrill in trying to complete a game or a level as quick as possible. I've never been that great at it, but it just looks magical when I see someone else speedrunning through something that takes me minutes and mere seconds. It's why I can appreciate short form video games like 10 Second Ninja, where the objective is to complete the level as quick as possible in under 10 seconds, as well as a game like Super Mario, where each individual level has so much nuance that trying to complete it in a quick fashion could have numerous ways of handling it. I've grinded away hundreds of hours trying to get the best times in many of games, only to be disappointed in the sheer difference in power level that the behemoth speedrunners have towering over me. Regardless of this fact, it's still more enjoyable to play these games, as a lot of times, it's not your intelligence that gets you the best times. It's your execution and know-how of the landscape that helps you maneuver and ultimately get you the optimal time. Such a game as that I'm trying to review today is Crashbots. Crashbots is an endless runner type game that is being released on PS4 and Switch on May 1st. My review copy of the game is on Switch, so I can't really vouch for the PS4 slash Steam version, but I will let you know when I believe that it's being a factor in my review. Crashbots is basically like one of those endless runner type games you'd normally see on mobile games, only instead there's obstacles confined into shorter levels. While beginner levels can range from 15 seconds or so per level, some of the later ones can drag on close to a minute. The objective is to, of course, make it to the finish line, but in your way are various machinations meant to hinder your progressions, but your battery level, basically your health, depletes over time. The game moves forward for you, and if you run into anything, you'll be knocked back and take a chunk of damage from your overall battery. The only way to recover this health back is to either collect one of these lightning bulk looking things, or find a battery pack. They could be lying around, or you could just break open a crate to find them. Unfortunately, you won't always get an energy boost from these, as there's traps that could emerge from them, causing you further harm instead of helping you. As well as running side to side, you can shoot things and also make use of your jetpack and slide at the cost of using more battery power. You can actually use the jetpack indefinitely, but it uses a ton of battery power, so that's probably not a good idea. They're absolutely necessary to complete certain parts of some levels, so trying to use them sparingly is advised, despite how much they actually help you speed-wise. There are also coins that you could collect that you could use to purchase upgrades for your robot, like making the jetpack use less battery, or allowing you to use much less battery while generally running around. And they do modestly help, but you probably won't feel any big improvements by buying them to be honest. The only thing that made a huge difference in my opinion was the jetpack improvement, which made flying through the air much less of a necessary sacrifice and more like an alternative way to moving, but a bit more costly. Along the way, you'll come across parts which you could use to unlock different robots, like a tankier build that can withstand much more damage, or a damaging robot that can kill enemies faster. Personally, while using a few, I felt as though they performed slightly worse than the base robot, not only in the way that some could take more damage or do less, but some could actually mess up on me. They wouldn't shoot an object that was right in front of them, or would have a harder time trying to get through an obstacle. It was frustrating having these issues and having no idea why. It may have just been my experience, but it was enough for me to not even bother with them outside of a few tries. In each level, you'll typically find a few obstacles there to shoot, slide under, or fly over. The level could even spice it up with a few triggers on the ground, or death traps. While you'd probably think a speed trigger would be a good thing in such a game, most times when there was a speed trigger on the ground, it leads to a situation that's a bit unfavorable for me. Seeing as how some obstacles are moving, getting the right timing to move through them is nearly impossible if you're going through breakneck speeds. It could just be me and my needing to get good, but often, it seems to be placed in unfair spots. And me being the speed junkie I am, I would probably just land on them over and over again knowing that they would just screw me over. On that, running through the levels in the early game felt pretty smooth once you actually got the hang of it. You'll feel like you're soaring through the level without a cure in the world. Later on in the game, Rather than things feeling reactionary, you'll come across some moments you'll genuinely have no way to prepare for. Making traversing the level after you've died to the same trap over and over again would seem as though it's a memory game. Once you get to know the stage enough to get through all the little tricks, such as a trap hidden within a crate, or an enemy that will blindsight you, the game gets a lot more mnemonic, making the frustrating levels seem more like a puzzle rather than something that makes your life miserable. I'll be honest. When I was initially playing this game, when I was a mechanic that seemed a little unfair, it didn't make me feel too confident about this being a good game, but I quickly learned to overcome them, 
I quickly began to realize that this wasn't just your typical just run through the game and get to the end using skill type game. It was one that you'll have to take each level and craft a plan to complete. When I managed to beat a level in my first try, it felt as though I was missing something. So I'd go back and play it again just to feel a bit better. Being able to fly through levels that previously dominated me made me feel a strong sense of accomplishment when I finally was able to overcome it. So beating something on my first try just felt a little dry in comparison. Something I can say isn't always on point, however, is the level design. Despite how tricky I said it was, there is merit in saying the game is bad in a way of implementing it. Like the aforementioned problems with the speed triggers, there are bad placements for the enemies, perks, and moving obstacles. I'd often try to get a battery pack or something and be met with an enemy or something. Like the aforementioned problem with speed triggers, there are bad placements for the perks, enemies, and moving obstacles. I'd often try and get a battery pack or something, and I'd be met with an enemy or moving obstacle that's in the way. And there's no way to slow down or stop, so that just means I can't get the object because there's something in the way. But me being the dummy I am, I'll try and get it anyway and get punished for it, all because it just happened to be in the same spot this time. It's not just this that gets frustrating, but my main issue is the angle of the camera. You can see things only from this awkward angle that makes judging how high you should fly to clear an obstacle or when I can duck to get under something much more frustrating when I'm wrong. The system of getting hit is also pretty inconsistent. Sometimes I'll get knocked back a little if I'm hit, but others I'll get flung back super far. Not only am I losing battery when I get hit, but I'm also losing battery just to get back where I was from when I got hit. The amount of times I lost just before I got the battery pack I needed is astonishingly high. There's also moments when I get hit then get stuck in a certain part of the level, basically getting hit over and over again until I finally got away. Getting away after that isn't always a good thing too, because once I actually get away, my battery would normally deplete afterwards, making me feel as though the collision isn't properly weighted. If I just get knocked back a little more, it would make situations a lot more easier to get out of. In others, I'm screwed no matter what I hit in the area. Some objects in the game also hit you as you're just passing by leading to moments where I feel like I have no idea whether or not I should just slide by. If I slide, I'll be losing my already low battery level, so I'll just get screwed either way. The game does come with five different types of environments though, such as a factory, the first area, or a haunted house type area, all complete with 25 levels. You can unlock them by collecting stars throughout each level. You don't even need to collect a lot to unlock the next area. Each area has their own mechanic such as falling logs and burrowing moles in the ground for the forest level, and a wild west stage that has... Gotta hate everything about this. You know what I do like? The haunted house area. Because a lot of the mechanics seem actually fair. You don't have ramps with terrible hitbox detection, skulls that fly out at you at weird angles, and robots shooting at you with hard to predict patterns. You just get straightforward challenges that you can see coming and overcome. Bats flying at you from the distance, of rotating robots with two giant swords, I mean, sure, it does have its flaws, like the swords coming out of the ground, but it genuinely feels like it has a lot better things to work with than probably anything else in the game. It also has one of my favorite boss battles in the area, which every area has if you can complete 24 levels. Completing the 24 levels, you can move on to level 25, that being a boss battle. These boss battles are really nothing special. You just move around like normal and avoid the hazards around and whatever the boss throws out at you. In the haunted house area, there's a giant sword that the boss uses that you need to avoid in order to attempt to shoot the giant robot in one of the three targets, much like any other boss. What makes this one special is a shield. If you hit the wrong area, your bullets will bounce back at you. Yeah, that's all I got really. There isn't much that I like about him, but after facing basically the same thing over and over again, it's kind of a nice change in pace. Probably the only big difference between all the other ones or whatever they have to throw out at you. Each boss tends to have elements from the respective levels to get in the way that you have to move around. So it's basically a test of your skills and much more reactionary, less than being that of just trying to learn the level, which is much less frustrating. The final thing I can talk about is the endless run mode. I actually don't really have much to say about this mode, as it's a lot like the boss battles in a lot of respects. You're just running through a level that's more reactionary rather than trying to memorize things. Only this time you're not trying to shoot down a giant robot. I do enjoy these modes as they feel a lot more satisfying to play. I'll still get caught up in PS traps that mess me up, but it's a lot more manageable here. You can also rock up plenty of coins in this mode to level up your bot, so that's good. All in all, it's a pretty interesting game. It's plenty to keep you busy. 
and I'm not sure if 10 bucks is the right price for the game, as it is kind of a mobile port, but it's sure to give you a challenge if you were to give it a shot. It's got enough in its levels to try and make you think differently about how to complete it, but sometimes obstacles can be downright harsh and even bucky. Like, sometimes the game would literally freeze on me. And even sometimes the shooting can be a little buggy, as it wouldn't shoot on command, I would have to press the button over and over again to get it out. But all in all, it's a game that can provide hours of fun and entertainment if you ever have the itch to play a runner or a speedrun type game. The books in the game are a pretty big annoyance, and some of the obstacles can be frustratingly designed, but if it's your type of game, it's definitely worth a play. And that's it for my review. Sorry if the entire time you could hear birds chirping in the background. That's because I'm actually outside. Thanks for watching to the end. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye.